The issue of dementia in football has become increasingly prominent in recent years, with one study last year finding former professionals were 3.5 times more likely to die with dementia than the average person. Now a new study has locked into exactly what is happening to the brain when the ball is headed. Here's what you need to know. Heading footballs and other accidental head impacts that occur while playing football change blood patterns in the brain, according to a new study in the journal Brain Injury. The study, cited by The Guardian, analyzed blood samples from 89 professional footballers in Norway's top division and discovered alterations in levels of microRNAs in the brain after heading the ball. According to the Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center, microRNAs are a family of molecules that help cells control the kinds and amounts of proteins they make, controlling the way genes produce new proteins mainly by binding with messenger RNA and preventing it from being translated into proteins. With proteins playing a fundamental role in the work of most cells, many microRNAs have been identified as key to the regulation of cognitive functions and memory processes lost in Alzheimer's disease, according to an article in the journal Frontiers in Pharmacology. And the new study, which found that repetitive headers alter the levels of six microRNAs that high-intensity exercise did not affect and accidental head injuries alter eight, suggests microRNAs could now be used as biomarkers to detect brain injury. In July, responding to a string of studies into the impacts of heading like this one, the Football Association in England introduced new guidance limiting Premier League and Football League players to 10 higher force headers in training sessions, though former Tottenham manager Espirito Santo publicly admitted ignoring it. And of course, football is not the only sport with a problem with head injuries, with the NFL's health and safety officer publicly acknowledging in March 2016 that there is a link between American football and the devastating brain disease chronic traumatic encephalopathy, also known as CTE. A study by the Department of Veteran Affairs and Boston University found that 87 out of 91 former NFL players tested suffered from a brain disease called chronic traumatic encephalopathy. CTE is a brain disease that researchers believe is caused by repetitive head trauma. Brain scans can detect signs of CTE, but it can only be confirmed posthumously. The disease causes a protein called tau to form around blood vessels in the frontal lobe. During stage 2, sufferers may experience rage, impulsivity, or depression. Symptoms of stage 3 include confusion and memory loss, as the tau proteins spread to other parts of the brain. Stage 4 is marked by dementia, as nerve cells in the brain die. During the final stages of CTE, the brain withers to roughly half the size of a normal brain. A federal judge has approved a $1 billion settlement between the NFL and thousands of ex-players. A standard football helmet has two layers, a hard outer shell and an inner layer of padding that's usually made of foam. The human brain is protected by a layer of fluid within the skull. However, that layer doesn't provide enough protection during sudden or forceful impacts, and that's how concussions happen. A typical helmet has several inches of padding inside that slows the acceleration of a direct hit and weakens the force of an impact. Some companies have experimented with putting another layer of padding outside the helmet that can further weaken the force of a hard impact. But that doesn't help against hits from the side that could rotate a player's head, twisting the person's brainstem. This damages the nerves there. A prototype helmet called Zero One has several layers of padding. A malleable outer layer bends inward during direct hits. The layer underneath bends at an angle during rotational hits. Football helmets are not perfect and it's unlikely they'll ever be able to prevent every type of head injury that could happen on the field. But they've come a long way from here. Former international rugby players are suing rugby's governing bodies after being diagnosed with degenerative brain diseases, and CNN reports that this could be the tip of a very large iceberg, as more players are reporting symptoms of dementia and memory loss. Among players putting forward a legal case against the game's governing bodies are Steve Thompson, Michael Lippmann, and Alex Popham. All three are in their early 40s and have recently been diagnosed with early-onset dementia and probable chronic traumatic encephalopathy, or CTE. CTE is a progressive degenerative brain disease caused by repeated hits to the head. Thompson says his memory has deteriorated to the extent that he can't remember playing for England in the 2003 Rugby World Cup final, let alone even being in Australia for the tournament. Thompson is part of a group of nine former players suing the governing bodies, but a wider group of more than 100 players say they are showing signs of neurological complications and are also interested in pursuing legal action, according to the lawyer coordinating the case. 
Chronic traumatic encephalopathy, also known as CTE, is a progressive brain disease that develops following repeated head impacts that shake the brain inside the skull. Blows to the head cause tau proteins, which hold together microtubules in the brain cell's transport system to modify and detach from the microtubules. Abnormal tangles of tau proteins accumulate over time, ultimately killing brain cells. The helmets worn by football players cannot protect them from repeated subconcussive hits because the brain inside the skull is still shaken by these hits. The FDA approved a blood test to help diagnose concussions. The brain trauma indicator test looks for two biomarker proteins, UCHL1 and GFAP, which are released upon injury to the brain into the blood. Elevated protein levels can be detected within 15 to 20 minutes of injury. The test can be administered within 12 hours of injury and takes 3 to 4 hours for results. Parents are currently diagnosed based on a combination of symptoms and imaging. CT scans can be problematic in that they don't always detect concussion, have 200 times the radiation of a chest x-ray, and are expensive. A CT scan can cost anywhere from 800 to 1,500 U.S. dollars, compared to the new test, which costs $150. The Vices Zero One was specifically designed to soften the blows NFL players take to their heads during games. The helmet is made of four different protective layers. The outer shell is made from flexible thermoplastic that compresses to absorb shock, then rebounds, much like a car bumper. Next is a layer of more than 500 polymer columns that can twist and move laterally, reducing the impact of rotational acceleration, a major cause of concussions. Underneath that is a hard inner shell that helps prevent skull fractures and brain hemorrhages. Below that, a layer of memory foam provides the player comfort. Traumatic brain injuries, often caused by roadside bombs, are one of the most common wounds sustained in the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. Primary blast injuries are caused by blast over pressure waves or shock waves. Pressure can pass through the torso or skull. Secondary blast injuries are caused by shrapnel or debris propelled by the blast. These cause blunt force wounds or penetrating trauma. Tertiary blast injuries occur when kinetic energy throws the victim into the ground or a solid object. On impact, the brain bounces from one side of the skull to the other. Rory Curtis, a British footballer from Worcester, who suffered a horrific crash in August 2012 that put him into a six-day coma, is doing well thanks to an experimental drug to treat post-traumatic amnesia (PTA). When Curtis awoke from his coma, he believed he was movie star Matthew McConaughey and was startled to see himself in the mirror because he actually doesn't look like McConaughey. It took Curtis around two months to realize that he wasn't a movie star and for him to stop asking when his next movie would be. Curtis also woke up being able to speak fluent French. One of the nurses at the hospital was from Africa and spoke with him. Him. Interestingly, it's an ability that stayed with him two years later. The brain damage Curtis suffered often left him confused as he would ask his parents if anyone was feeding their pet dog while his parents stayed with him at the hospital. When his mother told him that the pet dog had been dead for years, Curtis sobbed like a child, then suddenly remembered his mother was right. Family and doctors say how lucky it is that Curtis is alive and recovering so well, but doctors also caution that Curtis may need to spend the rest of his life adjusting to and dealing with his unique brain injury. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.